हरि ओम लेट्स डिस्कस चैप्टर 11 ऑफ भगवत गीता टुडे द चैप्टर 7 8 9 एंड 10 श्री कृष्णा हैज टॉक्ड अबाउट द ऑब्जेक्ट्स इन द कॉस्मोस ऑब्जेक्ट्स आउटसाइड ऑफ मी now what he has done is he has shown Arjuna many different forms of energies <coughs> in the universe. He has shown him many, many, many different qualities of the mother nature. He has shown him some fantastic objects like oceans, like these different energies, like these plants, like this animal kingdom. And Sri Krishna is saying, I am in these different vibhutis, these special expressions of energy and wisdom and I am in every object. So Arjuna is very confused. He says, look, Shri Krishna, you have confused me a lot. I really don't know who you are. You say you are in this little bird as prana. You say you are in me as mind. You say Arjuna is the Paramatma in like Arjuna is, has, is the divine in Pandavas. I am really confused. Can you just show me one form that makes sense, that will make sense to me with whatever you have said before, so that I can connect everything, a bigger picture, an integrated picture. It's like if you see an engine here, ah, okay, engine, good, good, good. Then a gearbox, oh, then four doors, then four wheels, then a steering wheel, then glasses, then seats, then this steel, plastic, all these things doesn't make sense. But if you assemble that into a car, then your mind can easily understand that. And that is exactly the problem that Arjuna had. So he was asking Shri Krishna to show him one integrated form which will make which will make him understand the whole picture. So this is the subject of chapter 11, the integrated Paramatma dimension. Now this Paramatma dimension is a cosmic form. To show the cosmic form, you need to, you cannot have gross mind because with the gross mind, I can only see the separate things. So, Shri Krishna is aware of that. So, he tells Arjuna that look, with your regular gross mind, it's impossible for you to comprehend and understand this cosmic form. So, what I will do is I will give you Divya Drushti, Divyam Dadami Te Chakshuhu, Shri Krishna says, I will give you that divine dimension, that transcendental mind and this is exactly what is state of Samadhi. So, Shri Krishna awakened the Kundalini energy of Arjuna and he took him to the self-realization state and what Arjuna saw in the state states of self-realization is this cosmic form. So, if you are interested in Samadhi, if you want to know what Buddha saw in Nirvana, what the masters saw in enlightened state, it is this form. And that is why for a yoga practitioner, this chapter becomes even more important. So, Arjuna was given this divine transcendental mind through which he could see the cosmic form. And then what did he see? This is the description of chapter 11. What first he saw is all the objects in the world, all the objects in the cosmos, in the universe, they started merging and melting together. Everything looked very beautiful, but all of that beautiful objects start merging into fire. Arjuna could not understand what's happening. Everything that he had known previously as 
the manifested world and universe and galaxies and suns, solar systems and everything, they all started merging. So, there was no more different forms and shapes, it all had merged into one. The identities that all these forms carried, Arjuna was seeing the identities merging together. There is a very beautiful verse in chapter 11 which says Divi Surya Sahastrasya Bhaved Yuga Padutitha Yadibha Sadrushi Sa Syad Bhasastasya Mahatmanaha. So he says to Krishna, Look what I am saying, it is your form. The light of this energy is so much more that so much intense that even thousand suns, if they sparkle in the sky at the same moment, it will still appear like a ray of light in front of the sun. You see this concept, it is that powerful. Now, this same verse that I just mentioned, Divi Surya Sahastrasya Bhaved Yuga Padutthita is narrated by a very, uh, very famous scientist, his name was J. Roberts Oppenheimer. He is regarded as the father of the uh, nuclear weapons. He was the architect of this first nuclear weapon that was designed by the United States, that was tested in Manhattan, it was like Manhattan Project was the code name for that. So, when he saw this explosion, nuclear explosion for the first time, he was the father of it. So, what he said was written down in the official records, the government records and this is what he said. So, the verse is narrated there, it is interesting that he was such a big fan of Bhagavad Gita and they say that he used to carry Bhagavad Gita copy in his pocket all the time, the American scientist J. Roberts Oppenheimer. But anyway, this is the form that Arjuna is able to see and then Arjuna is more confused because he cannot see the beginning of it. There is no birth, he, he cannot see any birth of this form, then there is no middle and there is no end to it. There is no Adi, there is no Madhya and there is no Anta, no beginning, no middle and no end. Not just that, but he was able to see the Brahma, the creator there, inside that form. Vishnu, the operator, organizer, the managing energy there and the destruction, Shiva, Rudra, there. All these three energies that are understood to be God, they are there contained within that form. The form is larger, the energies are a part of it. That made Arjuna even more humble. He could not understand what is happening. Then what he saw was the entire cosmos with galaxies and stars and planets, even the sun and the moon that we see from our everything contained in a very small space in that infinite form. The vibhutis that I discussed in chapter 10, all of these energies, all of these people, all of this pancha mahabhut, the earth, water, fire, air, space, all of this animals, all of these trees, plants, everything is a very tiny bit in that cosmic form. Then what Arjuna saw was something that started making him panic a bit. What he saw was people dying in one of the big mouths in this cosmic form. The cosmic form had infinite mouths and one of the mouths, all of these animals, all of these human beings, everything, they were entering and dying, getting killed in that intense energy of fire and that scared him because he saw these Kauravas, he saw some of his own people, he saw 
his guru there he saw bhishmacharya the great grandfather who arjuna was attached to they all dying so he was very very confused and he didn't know why is this happening but at the same time from the other mouth he saw the birth it was confusing for him the death was there the life was also there and the birth was also there so he could not really figure out the time the great people who lived in the past they were still there the people who were present in the world they were there and the people who were not born in today's world but they were there in that form the vibhuti is the great uh, people who ex- uh, represent the divine dimension slightly more than the common people in chapter 10 we discussed it great scientists great people who brought transformation to other human society who brought great values to human society the great emperors and rulers who established rules of law they are vibhutis they are special they have special energies bit more than the common person they were all there so arjuna could not really understand is the time existent or is the time non existent then as far as the space was concerned the space was just contained within that form and there was nothing beyond because the idea of beyond is connected with space or time but space or time both were contained within that form and this is exactly what the particle which created the entire universe as per big bang theory says the small particle that came into existence the space and time is contained within that particle the entire galaxies and all of these objects in the mother nature including everything on earth is was contained in that smallest particle this is exactly what arjuna is able to see in that contained experience of parmatma he was able to see time and space without any discrimination the whole space was contained time was contained now look if you think of this form it was too intense it was not something that arjuna was comfortable with because everything that he had understood in his life broke down there there was no law of physics there there was no understanding of time and space concept there there was no relations that existed there it was so intense the energy was so intense that he could not take it and he got scared he started shaking he could not understand what is happening and he didn't want to see that it was too much too strong think of a black hole what happens in black hole the suns like our sun they are eaten by the black hole within a matter of few hours that's the intense energy the cosmic energy and arjuna was seeing that energy so naturally he got very scared and then he requested shri krishna he said please there's a very beautiful verse he says adrushta purvam rujitoshmi drushtva bhayen cha pravyatitham manome you shown this a uh, unique kind of dimension to me i am excited to see it but at the same time i am suffering because i can't really handle this so he requests tadeva me darshay deva roopa prasida devesha jagan nivasa he says no please take this form back i can't handle it anymore i want to see a benevolent loving kind 
friend in you i can't handle this and with this request shri krishna takes him out of that state of samadhi or experience and he brings him back and when arjuna sees shri krishna with a beautiful smile then he is very relaxed now see this cosmic form to a mild human dimension full of compassion and love but that compassion and love of shri krishna that unconditional love of shri krishna had this knowledge behind it had this wisdom behind it the compassion and unconditional love without this understanding is not going to give you anything and that subject is the subject of chapter 12 so chapter 12 comes after this and that is bhakti yoga chapter people talk of devotion prayer god kindness and compassion i am setting up a background for that the background of the god's compassion and unconditional love comes with this wisdom so if you really look at this chapter chapter 11 what can you understand shri krishna showed him one man or one body and that body contained everything every object that you see is a part of that body if you look at the earth we divide the earth oh this is different uh, 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 continent that is different continent oh this is different country that is different country when we look at oceans we divide them ah okay this is atlantic oh this is pacific oh this is indian ocean if we look at people we discriminate oh this is white man oh this is dark man oh this is rich man this is poor man oh this is wise in uh, studied well studied man oh this is he doesn't know even to read or write illiterate man we divide everywhere we divide and what look what shri krishna is showing he is showing integration and that is connection that is what is the meaning of word yog to connect if you just look at your body how many cells are there billions how many neurons in your brain billions of neurons what is billion 1 billion is 1000 million what is 1 million hmm Hundred thousand multiplied by ten. <laughs> There are different cells, different organs, different limbs of your body. How do they work together? I give you some interesting example. I talked about serious subjects. So I give you a little interesting example. You are walking on the street, and you see an advertisement outside the shop. about the chocolate that you like and that chocolate is on special you know it says buy one get two free hmm? so who see that bold it's your eyes then when your eyes see that your legs start walking there your eyes don't walk your legs walk when you go inside you pick up not just one but maybe <laughs> two or maybe five five and 10 free huh? <laughs> then hands pick it up your legs don't pick it up you come to the counter your credit card pays the money your eyes legs hands don't when you purchase that and you eat one your tongue tests it eyes don't get to test legs don't get to test hands don't get to test your tongue is testing it when your tongue tests 
it doesn't keep it for long 30 seconds if you are really craving then maybe 5 seconds only and then goes in <laughs> so tongue enjoys it but doesn't keep it goes into your tummy the tummy keeps it for some time but the tummy doesn't test it if you eat too much the tummy gets upset <laughs> tummy has nothing to do with what is your taste and all these things but whatever it is who is happy with every action it's me i see but i say i am seeing it legs walk but i say i am walking your hands pick it up you say i am picking it up your credit card and your bank account is paying you say i am paying your tongue is tasting you say i am tasting you eat your stomach is getting food you say i am eating this is integrated idea of me every organ in your body is dependent on every other cell if one cell in your body is sick everything in your body is affected influenced a person with diabetes little sugar high the sugar high affects everything one day i eat little bit more it affects everything i don't sleep one day affects everything we have to see our body as a integrated system we cannot just say oh i have headache so i take disprin aspirin and i am fine no it's a integrated system you have to understand if your head there is a pain something wrong in your mind something wrong in your digestion something wrong in your breathing something wrong in your heart because everything is interconnected if you look at a forest it's interconnected it's a integrated picture the lion is equally important in the forest the deers are equally important in the forest the little rabbits and little rats they are equally important in the forest the plants every different type of plant is important in the forest if the lions go down the antelopes and the animals that eat grass increase if they increase in number then the vegetation the green greenery goes down because they eat everything to keep that on check the tiger and lion is important if there are too many antelopes tigers grow in number if there are more tigers then they need more food so they kill more antelopes the antelope number goes down as the antelope number goes down tiger and lion number also goes down look i have just given you one little example like a forest is one body the society is also one body the human society is also one humanity yoga has said vasudhaiva kutumbakam vasudha the whole earth is one family just not society everything in on the earth is one family and because we are not treating this as one family we are all paying the price a country should operate like a one integrated body in a country if there is discrimination and certain sections of the society are not treated well it creates disharmony that will influence every other person if i think that i will be safe in this beautiful place and i have such big walls and security systems and everything that's not going to work unless people around me are contained and peaceful this is an idea that one can derive from this integrated aligned picture if you look at the corporates the corporates are also same in every corporation every department is important you can't say oh this hr department is not so important only sales department is important you can't say that manufacturing uh, uh, department is not as important you can't say finance is not as important everything is equally important if one department or one person is not functioning well it affects the whole organization and that's why these quality initiatives came in 
they have one vision, one mission. You all know the quality initiatives that the corporations take in every association, organization. So the concept here is, even in the family, it should be integrated. The family structures in today's world are not really working well because people are not recognizing the role of every member in that family. Even between husband and wife, they are not equally respecting each other's roles. That's where the problems start. When I think I am more important, that's where the family starts breaking down. So we have to look at this integrated picture. and find way to connect with that energy. That's the message of chapter 11. So I'm going to stop here. Hari Om.